Billy, you so crazy. Yo, what's cracking? What's cracking? It's your boy, Billy, you so crazy. And we back, and we back, and we back, and we back with another one. Y'all read the title, so you already know what I'm doing, man. We got nine foods you wouldn't believe were developed for the military, all right? Let's find out what these nine foods are. If you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Comment down below what you want to see me react to next. And I have it up for you when I get the chance. You just got to be patient with me, all right? If you want to done a whole lot quicker, I do have a Patreon link in the description. It's the very first one at the top. No pressure, no worries. You don't have to do this only if you want to, all right? Um, follow me on my social media links, all that good stuff. But enough talking, y'all. I'm really, I'm really curious to find out what are these nine foods that were cre that were developed for the military besides MREs. <laughs> like if the whole list of these nine foods is just MRE foods, I'm gonna be real pissed. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be a pissed off veteran in this video. But um, let's just give it a chance to find out what it's about. All right, this video was uploaded by The Riches, so y'all be sure to go subscribe to them, check them out. But enough talking, let's go. If you've ever gone on a long and strenuous hike, you know how important packing the right food can be. You need to pack yeah, ingredients that'll give you energy to keep moving, as well as something that doesn't taste too bad. Now, multiply those needs by a thousand and you'll start to understand the difficulties the military faced when they needed to feed their soldiers during the World Wars. For those serving in the U.S. Armed Forces, food of a high nutritional value was mm -hmm. crucial for survival. And the scientists working at the Army's laboratory did everything they could to ensure that a soldier's diet fulfilled their requirements. And while not every venture was a success, many of their early attempts at healthy and convenient food have actually lasted throughout the years and have become staples in many American diets. Before we teach you the origins of some of your favorite snacks, make sure to like this video, subscribe to The Riches, and join our notification squad. Mm -hmm. Also check out our community tab for more intriguing content. Now let's take a look at nine of your favorite I know foods McDonald's that ain't on this list for the military. Sliced bread. What? It wasn't until the Second World War that pre-sliced bread became a common thing, and it was all because of the U.S. military. The bread slicer was actually invented by Otto Frederick Rovetter back in 1928, but people thought the invention was odd and unnecessary. But back in this time, food was rationed and soldiers had to make do with what they could get for nutrients. Being Still doing that to this day. To produce, sliced bread was one of the staple foods during the war, but while it's cheap, it doesn't exactly have a long shelf life. So military scientists figured out a combination know. of anti-staling additives to make shelf-stable bread that could be posted to military troops without them worrying that it would be moldy by the time they received it. The military then started sending out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to troops, and that idea quickly caught on back home too. Let After me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all, the, the military is the reason why I love me a good PB&J. First of all, the reason why I love peanut butter in general, we used to be out there boxing over some peanut butter, you hear me? And it's some of y'all that I know that rock with the jalapeno cheese and all that other but I was a peanut butter connoisseur. You feel me? Like I was, I was ready to fight everybody for mines on the hood. <laughs> Yo, but a peanut butter and jelly right now is smacking. Oh, I'm about to make me one after this video. After the war ended, sliced bread was commonplace, and the process yeah, of combining it with anti-staling additives was suddenly the norm. So the military didn't exactly invent the idea of sliced bread, but they did popularize it, and they were the ones who figured out how to make it last longer. Yeah, we're so buddy. thankful they we did, make everything because last who longer. has time to spend sliced bread? And we don't bread? care about expiration dates either Cheetos. in the military. If the idea Cheetos are of kicking gross. back after a long day and opening a bag of Cheetos sounds great to you, you're not alone. As one of the nation's favorite snacks, it's hard to visit any corner store without seeing this brightly colored packaging right in front of you. But it may surprise you to hear that Cheetos developed their deliciousness thanks to the U.S. military. During World War I, the military funded research to dehydrate foods to make it easier for them to be packed into meal kits for soldiers. MREs. One of the results of that research? Cheese powder. It seems that the soldiers in the military were missing their cheese, but it was impossible and unrealistic to send such a luxury over during the war. But at the end of the war, another dilemma arose. There was all this leftover cheese powder that needed to be sold off. Food corporations bought the dehydrated cheese for cheap and used it to produce cheesy snacks. Mm -hmm. Thus, Cheetos were made soon after <laughs> thanks to the dehydrated cheese created by the military. 
While they weren't directly what? developed for the military, the military still created. So you're telling me this is how they came up with. I've never heard this story before. Have y'all heard this story before? What? My daughter loves her some damn che Cheetos, boy. Key ingredient to this snack food. That's wild. Cheetos just wouldn't be the same without that powdery cheese. That is. Pringles. What? You may be surprised to learn that Pringles were made for the Army. Founder Alexander Lieva really? actually made the chip while working for the U.S. Army. He wanted to produce a food that was semi-nutritional but also tasty and cheap. Usually chips were made using peeled and cut potatoes and that was the tradition. But Alexander was convinced he could save money and resources by using a different method, by using potato flakes that he reshaped into the shape of a chip. This way he could ensure that every last bit of the potato hadn't been wasted. Quickly, the Pringle caught on and it's now a popular snack available really in many Pringles flavors go hard. all over Especially the world. Especially with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> That's a sponsor like for this us, video, by the way. Just love snacking on a chocolate bar to relieve their sweet tooth. But while most of us can store chocolate away in a refrigerator or in the cupboard when the weather gets warm, these soldiers didn't have the same option. Nope. And they were finding Negative. that their chocolate bars quickly melted, melted. unless yep. they ate them straight away, which just wasn't feasible. Can't Forrest bring no chocolate Mars to Sr. is a man we can thank for developing M&Ms. After he got the idea for the candy when observing soldiers eating chocolate pellets with a hard shell during the Spanish Civil War. The hard shell that we'd love to crunch when snacking on M&M's was designed to stop the chocolate from melting in the warm weather. M&M's were then quickly adopted by the United States Armed Forces during the Second World War, and they were actually sold exclusively to the military. Packaged guacamole. Not the guac. During the World War, the government extra. looked for a way to preserve food for soldiers over the long term that wouldn't be at the expense of their health. Scientists discovered that if they applied high pressure to foods instead of heat, that the microorganisms burst and the food was sterilized and safe to store. Along with producing preservative-free lunch meats and fresh-tasting bottled juices, this process became used to store guacamole so that it would stay green under its wrapper. This method saved the guacamole from becoming brown and gross. We don't imagine that soldiers were spreading avocado on their toast, but we'll definitely be thanking the military for then. developing the process that allows us to just open up a package of guac whenever we need it. Instant coffee. The guac, boy. The humble Let me tell y'all something. These soldiers got on my nerves about this coffee. Oh my. Boy couldn't even go pick up chow without hearing Where's the coffee? Where's the, why didn't they bring coffee? And then when I finally do get some coffee, these fools barely drink it. Yeah, it's never pleasing any, so it's just, you just can't please them all. You really can't. They got on my nerves with that. I swear I wanted to fight. A couple of y'all watching my videos right now. Some of y'all used to be in my unit. Y'all know. Y'all know how y'all get about that coffee, man. Boy, you just get on my nerves with that. Coffee I just got upset thinking been about a it. Crucial part of our mornings for far longer than we care to remember, and it seems it has been just as important coffee. for military soldiers over the years. But like because all of the of other that. foods on our list, it was difficult to import and store safely. So scientists had to figure out an easier way of giving their soldiers a caffeine hit without breaking the bank. The first ever instant coffee was created in Britain in 1771, but the idea didn't seem to catch on. But everything was to change not too many years later. The the first American instant coffee was developed in the 1850s and the product was field tested during the Civil War. Suddenly, everyone noticed the benefits of this powdered version of the drink. During the First World War, the U.S. military bought all existing supplies of their instant coffee in order to send out to their troops for their morning drink or mm -hmm. evening pick-me-up. It mm -hmm. must have been a move greatly approved by the military since they could drink their coffee without worrying about when the next batch would appear. Plus, it definitely helped to keep them sharp and alert. Mick no. Rib. Yeah. Even to the Food Mick technologists ribs? at the Natick Center in Massachusetts were asked to develop fabricated meat by figuring out a way to turn the wasted parts, like gristle and bones, into something edible. And this is where we began to see the discovery of the McRib. Nowadays, it's one of our top I never choices one of those on the McDonald's life. menu, but it wasn't first developed out of thin air. In fact, this style of food was first created by the U.S. military, who bought all of the unwanted parts of dead animals and ground them up to reproduce what looked like a rib. By scraping flesh off of bones, removing sinews, and grinding it into flakes, 
the military discovered that their new product looked just like a whole muscle cut. By adding salt, flavorings, colorings, and preservatives, they managed to create a fast food looking product that soldiers really loved make anything and out still anything. enjoy to this day. And not too many years later, McDonald's decided to use this slightly gross method to create something similar for the masses. We don't know they about you, but check. we don't know if we could ever look at a McRib in the same way ever again. They owe us a check. Energy bars. We need all that. Energy bars might be something you reach for regularly I'm one if right you're a fan of working out, <laughs> but their humble beginnings were popular long before we decided to start building up our muscles. Back in 1937, the United States Army commissioned the D-Ration Bar, made up of chocolate, sugar, oat flour, cacao fat, skim milk powder, and flavorings. The bars were Sounds supposed to right. do the job of giving a soldier energy when they were reaching a point of no return. Yep. So these early energy bars were jam-packed full of nutrients to the extent that they included a huge 600 calories per bar. But because they were so calorie dense, they didn't taste great and many soldiers detested them. So the army tried to pull together a healthy, energy-filled bar that tasted better and couldn't melt. They developed a fortified fruit bar that was sweet and moist. This fruit bar tasted slightly better than the previous chocolate bars and eventually caught on in popularity. Nowadays, you'll see fruit-flavored energy bars all mm -hmm. over the market, but they've certainly improved in taste since the war. Pre-packaged salad. Literally eating one now, that's crazy. Pre-packaged and pre-washed salad is great if you're eating on the move. And due to its long-lasting qualities, it's also useful if you're not planning on using your salad for a couple days but also don't want it to spoil. As you probably know, most heads of lettuce quickly go off and can't be eaten. Yeah, buddy. The leaves go soggy and darken in color, which was no use to soldiers during the Vietnam War. Because remember, they weren't able to receive their food for a long time mm -hmm. while it was in transit. And this was where we saw the beginning of military-developed, pre-washed and pre-packaged salad. These bags are preserved Don't using modified no atmosphere in the packaging, I hold you. I which never. delays ripening of the veggies and prevents the lettuce from spoiling. Nowadays, it's almost impossible to go shopping without seeing bags of pre-washed salad lining the shelves. The invention and discovery of it was a surefire way to improve the diets of soldiers without sending over a whole load of wilted salad leaves. Plus, we sure appreciate the convenience, too. That's all for nine of your favorite foods that were developed for the military. So, I'm going to tell y'all like this, all right? It sounds like y'all need to be thinking us more than just for our service at this point because the military, like, we... A lot of y'all babies' favorite snacks. A lot of y'all favorite snacks. We been did that. See, and this, this is something I've been trying to tell, you know, my homegirls that are big into the, the, you know, their faces and stuff being clear, like the best skincare routine I've ever had was basic training. Cause we literally just had the bare minimums and my face had never been so clear in my life. My life diet was on point. It was just, now don't get me wrong. There was times where, you know, we was out in the field for, you know, a week or whatever. And you know, didn't get a chance to wash my face as much and you know, dirt and sweat and all that stuff. But let me tell you something skin was super duper clear you know like i have to see a dermatologist to, just to get my face to be just like this for right now and it, it could be a whole lot better this can definitely be a whole lot better it was a whole lot better before but you know whatever we ain't gonna get into all that but i'm just saying that i i know that the military has shaped the way of a lot of things but i didn't know this were, were y'all familiar with this did y'all know this let me know in the comment section that was nine foods you wouldn't believe were developed for the military dope 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 man um if you enjoyed this reaction get this video a thumbs up comment down below if you want to see me react to next follow me on all my social media links are right there send me a message on any one of those and i get back with you as soon as possible it is your boy billy you so crazy and i see you on the next video man i'm out this thug